A fundamental property of matrices that we will use is the following. Now, let's start from the matrix B. We want to calculate the variation of the determinant of the matrix. And if we, if we divide this by the determinant of the matrix itself, determinant of B, we can show that this is equal to the trace of B inverse times the variation of the matrix B. If you want, this is also equal to the trace of delta B times. In particular, this means that we apply this matrix to another matrix, which is the inverse, when I say times, because that's a multiplication, but it's a matrix multiplication because this delta B is um, to be thought of as a perturbation of the matrix B. So it will be another matrix and we act with this matrix on the inverse and then we take the trace and we will show this, this is equal to the variation of the determinant of B. So when we use this symbol, this variation simply means that we are changing by a small quantity this matrix B. So by a small quantity mix means that we are adding a small perturbation which will be itself a matrix. So B will become B plus delta B, right? So th this means that we take the variation of this matrix. So here we have also the determinant and uh, it will be more complicated to calculate the variation of the determinant. But in principle, we perturb each term of the matrix Bij to Bij plus delta Bij, something like this. So we have a term plus a small perturbation of each term of the matrix. So we want to prove this equality here. This is not trivial. And this is important. Let me tell you why. This is important because in general relativity, we have to calculate in general the variation of G, which is the, the determinant of the metric tensor, and we divide by, by G, which is this determinant here. And in general relativity, this is equal to G mu nu times delta G mu nu. And this can also be written as the trace of G mu prime, G mu prime nu, delta G nu mu. So here we sum over nu. And when we take the trace, the trace is going to act on these two indices, mu prime and mu. So basically they will become equal and we have to sum over them. Simple as that. So if we prove this formula here, we basically prove also this one over here, which is uh, important for general relativity, and we will use this one. I also proved it in uh, my previous courses on uh, general relativity, and I did it in a different manner. So I'm not, uh, I was not following this uh, kind of proof, so I did not prove something like this, and then show that indeed, if we manage to, to prove this, Basically, we also prove this one. Here, I'm following a different line, basically. So if you're interested, just follow along this video. Because I want to prove this formula here. So in particular, we have already derived a result in the previous videos. So we have shown that the determinant of a matrix, B, can be written as the exponential of the trace of the natural log of the matrix. So from here, we can write the natural log of the determinant of B, which is equal to the trace of the natural log of B. Simple as this. Now we can take the variation of uh, this formula. So on the left, we get the variation of the determinant of B divided by the determinant of B, because we have taken the variation of the of a logarithm. So the variation of a logarithm is just the change in the argument of the logarithm divided by the argument itself. Right? So these are scalars. We can uh, we can easily work with them. The determinant of a matrix is a scalar. So we are using that B as a scalar, simple as that. And then on the right we have the variation of the trace of the natural logarithm of B. Now, this is slightly more challenging on, on the right, because at first 
it might seem complicated to work with the, the trace of a logarithm of a matrix. It seems complicated. But now let's rewrite the logarithm in a different manner. So we have the delta trace of log b, natural log b. This can be written as delta trace natural log of identity matrix plus b minus identity matrix i. So i is the identity, mat identity matrix. And you can see that i minus i, of course, uh, that's just a trivial zero matrix. And therefore, this argument here is exactly coincident with this argument here. Simple as that. But now, he, written in this form, we can expand the logarithm of a matrix. So we have delta trace. And when we expand the logarithm, we have to expand this, so we have b minus i minus b minus i squared over 2 plus b minus i cubed over 3 plus dot dot dot. Now, when we consider the variation of a trace, so this is a variation symbol, and here we have the trace. We can change the order between delta and the trace. This is quite easy to understand because the trace is simply a contraction of indices and delta acts on the matrix elements, whatever labels we have for the indices. So this trace is going to act on the indices of these uh, matrices. So the trace of a sum in particular is just equal to the sum of the traces. and when we act with this delta, this delta is going to act on the elements of these matrices B here. So it's quite easy to understand that we can write the trace of the variation. So we can put this delta inside the argument of the trace. So we have delta B, which is the variation of this first element. Of course, the variation of the identity matrix is zero. Then we have minus one half variation of now we have to be careful here because we have two terms when we act on this term. So we have delta B multiplied by B minus I, and then we have minus one half B minus I delta B. So you have to be careful because when you act on this term with the delta, you have to treat it like this, B minus I times B minus I. So Delta is going to act on this term first, and this is what you're going to get. And then delta is also going to act on this term, and this is what, you, what, what you're going to get. Simple as that. And similarly, you have to do the same thing for, for this and uh, the, other, the, um, the other higher order terms. So let me write the variation of this. So in particular, we have plus one third, and then you're going to get delta B times b minus i squared, then you have plus 1 over 3, you have b minus i times the variation of the second b minus i, which will give you delta b, and then you have b minus i, and finally you have one third b minus i squared delta b, and then you have higher order terms. But now, at this point, this is going to become easier because we can use the cyclic property of the trace as well as its linearity. So the linearity means that we can, we can sum all the traces. So we have the trace of this plus the trace of this plus the trace of this multiplied, of course, by these constants and so on. And you can also use the cyclic property. So the trace of this can also be written by, uh, like this, the trace of b minus i times delta b, because this can be put at the front, since we are getting, we are taking the trace of that. And we can do something similar here for these terms. So for example, we can write this as the trace of delta b times b minus i squared. And for example, we can write this other term as the trace of b minus i 
b minus i squared delta b or if you want uh, this is equal to the trace of delta b times b minus i squared so you get the idea right you get the idea and what i'm going to do is i'm going to write this by using the cyclic property so the cyclic property here is fundamental so we have the trace i have delta b and this delta b multiplies the identity so i have simply rewritten this first term this first term as delta b times the identity then i have this second term and also this other one here which i can put together and i can write as b minus i right using the cyclic uh, the, the cyclic property of the trace these two are exactly the same so i can write b minus i and then i have plus b minus i squared because this term can be summed with this one and this one thanks to the cyclic property of the trace and also the linearity of the trace of course and then you get the idea you have uh, the next term would be minus b minus i cubed and so on you get all these terms and therefore what you get is that this can be written as the trace of delta b and here you have a series a geometric series with matrices sum over k from 0 to infinity of i minus b to the power k and at this point at this point we, we can recognize that this matrix here i mean this is a, an infinite sum a geometric series th that will give us assuming that it converges it will give us the inverse of the matrix b and you can easily think of this if you try to use a geometric series i will say something more on this in the next video so don't worry too much this is also known as the neumann neumann series basically it's a geometric series for uh, for matrices instead of uh, using just scalars so if you if you treat b as a scalar and i the, the identity matrix you, you simply replace it with one well, it's easy to understand that what you're going to get is a uh, this scalar inverse. But I will say more on this in the next video. So assuming that we can do this, we get the trace of delta B multiplied by B inverse, or if you want trace of B inverse delta B. And this allows us to conclude this proof so the proof is the following. We showed that, that the variation of the determinant of a matrix B divided by the determinant of the, the matrix B is equal to the trace of B inverse delta B. And by the way, let me also tell you that this is also known as the Jacobi identity. This is known as Jacobi identity.